Hi everyone and welcome back to Notflow. In the last video we saw together how to add shields and swords to our crowd, how to randomize their behaviors and their animations to make the crowd look more organic. Today we'll see together how to adapt the agents to a terrain to make sure they don't go through it. It's a very important skill when making crowds. Without further ado, let's dive in. For the sake of simplicity, I'm starting out with the same setup of last time and I will just quickly go through it. So we have our agents over here, we are adding some clips, then here we are importing some models like a sword and a shield. We are scaling it down and adjusting to the body of the agent and then connecting all of this to the agent layer when we're actually making the assignment manually of the prop to the agent bones. Here we are multiplying our agents, we are scattering more than one agent and we are randomizing stuff like the state or the clip offset. and the layers of course. Lastly we are leveraging the crowd motion path tools as we saw in the first lesson of this series. We are also adding a house, in them avoid the house, connecting that to the third input of the crowd motion path avoid. Merging all together with a grid we see this result. And the crazy thing is that it's playing back in real time. What happens if my grid was rotated something like this? As you see, they are going through. They have no clue that this should be their ground. Some of them are floating and some of them are going through. They're just walking in a plane. It doesn't matter how many times I play this, they will just not respect the plane. That's why terrain adaptation is a very important skill to have when making crowd. I'll show you two methods. So the first one is a little bit brute force and it won't work if you're going so close to the crowds, but it's a very quick and easy way to make it work if you're seeing the crowd from far. Before showing you the first method, I need to make, of course, a terrain. So I will start creating a height field node. The height field is preferred as it's technically a 2D volume so it's easier to compute for collisions and it's also very customizable for making grounds. So for now I'll reduce the size to 100 by 300. I will change the grid spacing to 0.2 so I have more details in my height field. I will visualize it and that's my ground. Then I want to add some noise. So I'll create an HF noise and connect the first input in my terrain. By visualizing you'll see the details that we're getting but of course it's too strong so I will reduce the amplitude to 18 and the element size to 24. Lastly I want to reduce the roughness to 0.39. Now that I have a base to simulate my crowd I need to make the agent understand what's going on. So as I told you the brute force way is to use a rain node because if you remember our crowd motion path are actually just points so if for instance you take a node and you connect it here in the motion paths, you'll see that they are just lines with some points. So they are geometry that we can use to control what's going on in the next stage. So I will name this node motion paths just for the sake of keeping everything clean and organized. My ray, it's asking me for ray points or primitives, and that's my motion paths. And for collision primitives, I want these ones to be projected, to be rayed on my ground. Let's visualize the ray. And as you can see, it's sort of working. I also want to see my height field, so I will create a merge, and I will merge my motion paths with my height field noise. It's sort of working, but not really. Some of them are going down. So the only thing you will need to change in the ray is the method to minimum distance. And that will make all the paths adapt to the rain. And now if we connect the ray into the first input of the ground motion path evaluate, I will need to create another merge node because I want to merge my terrain and my agents that now will follow the right behavior. So let's see everything together. And as you can see, your agents are now going on top as you would expect and they are following the terrain. This is a very simple and brute force way of doing it because it's sort of working. The main problem is that if you go very close, you see that they are not really adapting to terrain. Some of them are going a little bit down and some of them are going a little bit up. And that's just because it's not reading the correct bones of the rig, is neither doing that precisely. It's just raining the motion paths on the ground. So for the second workflow, I will move my setup a little bit up and I will make some space between the agent layer and the crowd source. And I'll create a node called agent prep. Let's connect it. The agent prep will make Houdini understand where the bones of the rig are actually situated. Because of course the bones of the rig are called hips, upper arm for instance, but Houdini doesn't really know where they are in the agent itself. So this node will take care of that mapping. So for instance you can start from the torso and it's looking for the hips, so you can find the Mixamo rig hips. We will need to do the same for the head and that's the Mixamo rig head. And for the lower back we are looking for the Mixamo rig spine. And so you can do the same for the two legs over here 
here, just adding two limbs and finding the correct bones. Of course, I've already done that for you, so you just need to copy paste what I've done. And here it is. The only important thing will be to put the rest clip in typos, as that will probably help you to better understand where the joints are located while you're selecting them. And now we can create a node called Agent Terrain Adaptation. And here we can connect our agent. And over here we need our environment. So I'm using the same one as before, exactly with the same settings. And by connecting it in and making sure I am on the first frame, pressing W so I can actually see my agent, we can visualize the results. So by default, we are only seeing the agents, of course. So let's create a merge node. And I want to connect my ground with my agents and visualize everything together. So as you'll see, by pressing play, everything should work quite nice, although it's a little bit slower because, you know, it's a simulation. The main problem that here I notice is not really so visible is that they are not really locked with the fit, so they are sort of sliding. If you notice, in this case, it's subtle, but in some other situations, it will be way more visible. And it will not be a correct behavior because, you know, we don't really slide that much when we walk. So to make this more precise, we need to use foot locking. Because over here in the agent adaptation, we already have foot locking enabled, but it's not really working because we need something else is giving us an error over here because if you check we need some foot plan channels and that's what we need to create so in the agent prep if you go inside in the additional channel you can create a foot plan chop network just by clicking here Houdini will do all the calculations for you and it will generate you a chop network that we can move here so we can visualize it better if you go inside it's basically reading the agent and all the different joints related to the fit the animations that they have to play going outside again in the agent terrain adaptation making sure in Enable foot locking is on, the agents will lock themselves way better on the ground. I mean, sort of. Well, you see, the behavior is more correct, but now we have a problem. It's a very easy to fix problem. It's a very common problem that you will find when doing crowd, is that the bone of the agent that we need to adapt to the terrain, it's actually here. So it's not really a correct position. And what I mean by that? You see, the agent terrain adaptation is adapting the feet to the ground. So one bone is here, and that's okay. And the other one is actually in the ankle, but we don't want to adapt the ankle to the ground. So if you go in the agent, Agent prep. Let's visualize it again. And again, for making it easier, make sure you are in typos. I want to visualize my agent, so I press space G to center me in the viewport. By pressing enter, you see what I mean. I don't want to put this one on the ground, so I can move it. Let me select it just by clicking once, and I will press space 3 to go in front view. And then I will manually lower this one. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I will try to get as perfect as possible. And I will do the same over here. So I will lower my ankle to the ground. And you see something has changed over here. Now I have my ankle plan channel and the whole plant channel that have been generated by my additional channel. And here I have some offset and that's exactly what I did right now. So you see this will be very important for the adaptation to the terrain. To check it, let's actually visualize our merge. I will space G to center everything, space 1 to actually go in perspective view. And I will go back because I need to refresh my simulation. And now if you press play, this will be the best way to make terrain adaptations. Not only they are adapting to the terrain, they are also inclinating a little bit. So if they will go up, they will actually bend their back forward so it will make everything more believable and that's because of the agent prep because now ODA knows where is the hip where is the spine where is the head and so on so over here you have a bunch of settings that you can play with so for instance you can change this knee dumping threshold let's go to the first frame and visualize what's going on if I change this one it's just a way to actually control how the knee should behave usually defaults are fine but if you check adjust hips you see something will change you can change the offset so you can make them lower, higher, and the, you have lots of customizations for this. The most important one that I think is very useful is the backward lean and the forward lean. This will make sure again, as I was saying before, that when they're going up, they will bend a little bit more forward and that will make everything more believable. While they are going down, they will bend backwards, sort of like to maintain equilibrium. It's just a subtle thing, but it will have a lot. So if I disable this terrain adaptation, you see how it was before and how it is now. I wish I had a more visual example for you, but trust me, when you have something that looks way more bent up this will help a lot in lots of situations so now your agents are actually prepared to any kind of terrain to any kind of randomizations they are not sliding on the floor as you can check just by moving some frames forward and it will be a little bit slow because it needs to compute a simulation but you see they are perfectly still so some will argue that this level of control is not really necessary for a crowd as they usually 
are seeing from far. But you see, if we have these nodes, there is a reason. Usually crowds are not only meant for far shots, but also for something that it's this close. If you have characters that are pretty well made. So again, previewing all of this, this is the result. And remember, if you have this overlaid, it's probably because in the merge pack, you just need to check pack input and uncheck it. And that will help you for the highlight. So now you have a professional looking crowd with randomizations adapting to it rain. And again, you can leverage at any time the motion paths to make everything more interesting. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. This is one of my favorites because it's such a tricky one, but it's, it's not supposed to be hard. If it's well explained, it should be clear enough for you to try and make your own. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer them. Until then, I will see you in the next one. Thanks.